Thanks for joining us at Ride On Replicas, where we're proud to bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review is brought to you in part by Rogers Hobby Center in Saginaw, Michigan, where the fun begins. This review covers the 1976 Chevy Vega Funny Car. It's a 125 scale kit from AMT, number 1156. Now the Vega Funny Car debuted in 71 from AMT as the uh, Vega kit number T381 and all along the nose piece has been changed uh, up to the current version which was released in 2019 as 1156. Now it uh, comes with the original 75 box art for the most part and it has 105 pieces molded in white, silver, uh, a clear chrome, black vinyl tires and water slide decals. It's a about an intermediate level kit, uh, skill level kit, and it has all the parts to build all the versions except for the 76 release that had a spoiler on the roof. Now there's a grill uh, for the earlier releases, but you really can't use them without heavy modifications. The dimensions when you're finished with a kit are 7 inches long, 3 and a quarter inches wide, and 2 and a half inches high. But with the body supports, it's about three and three quarters inches high when it's holding up the body. Uh, oh, just a second, folks. My program manager, Newton, wants to come in. Uh, hi, hi, Newt. Come on in here. What you got? This one's really cool. Is it hard to build? Well, it's actually a pretty simple kit, but there are some tricky spots. The front suspension and headers need some close attention to detail and you have to keep the frame square while it dries. Was this car real for racing? Um, a few of the big names, you know, racers, got back in the day used Vega bodies or fiberglass renditions because they were very lightweight. But just the idea of a tiny little four-banger runabout doing 200 miles an hour was enough to get the crowd's attention. Here are the contents of the kit. As you can see, uh, it's nicely molded in uh, white vinyl for the body parts and uh, there's a silver metallic sprue tree there some of the related pieces for the under underbody but uh, it goes together well and we'll be using uh, tube glue or sometimes super glue for fragile parts and white glue for windows uh, but please remember to heed the manufacturer safety and use guidelines when using any of the products uh, that you see or hear mentioned in the review. Here are the decals in the kit and as you can see it covers just about every version of the Vega Funny Car. Um, you can make just about any one of them really uh, with some extra work on that front end. Uh, but they're very colorful, they've got good register and um, you can uh, be sure that some of the larger ones might take some setting solution to conform to the body. Go ahead and get out the basic engine block parts where we'll start construction. Um, the box calls this a RAP 454 motor, so uh, go ahead and uh, assemble the basic block halves, uh, cylinder heads, and front end transmission there. They'll be painted um, black, and the, um, the intake there will be painted uh, aluminum, and then attach that to the top of the engine. So you'll find the chrome parts for the blower, um, and also the manifolds are there along with the breather. And we're going to assemble the three sections of the blower and attach that to the manifold. Um, that's of course the uh, the front and back and the uh, body. And then uh, the valve covers can be attached to the cylinder heads. And uh, remember when you're using chrome parts you have to scrape off the plating for the areas where you're going to glue uh, so that you get a good bond. Now the uh, breather tube then can be attached to the uh, left valve cover. And these pieces in the kits box and then the fuel pump and the magneto are painted uh, steel color and the blower belt gets painted with some flat black for the belt and some steel color for the pulleys. Now the starter is painted gloss black and the oil filter is orange. The blower belt gets attached to the front of the engine assembly followed by the fuel pump and then add the magneto to the manifold. Now the starter can be attached to the right side of the engine uh, assembly there and the oil filter attached to the left side. The parts for the wheel assemblies and the front wheel gets installed into the front tire and the inner wheel ring can be attached to the back of the front wheel locking the front wheel in onto the front tire. So repeat these steps for the other side. 
I'll need these parts for the rear wheel assembly and the rear mag is installed into the slick and the rear uh, uh, wheel inner ring then is installed into the other side of the rear slick and attached to the rear mag. Now the rear hub can be painted uh, semi-gloss black and attached to the back of the mag and repeat these steps to assemble the other side. Now we'll use these pieces to begin assembling the frame and suspension and the left and the right frame, the front uh, transmission mount um, suspension piece and the rear suspension along with the uh, cross member there and the tank stand can be uh, assembled um, using some super glue if needed uh, but you might want to use uh, some slow setting glue to make sure that the, um, the pieces are assembled and everything is square. Now I found uh, you might want to put it into a jig or set it on something where you, you can see that it will um, it will assemble and dry properly. I uh, actually put mine on a uh, spray paint can lid and allowed the frame assembly to stay straight and true while it was drying. Now that's kind of important for wheels um, and alignment. Now once the glue is completely dry, uh, I painted the frame uh, Testers 1125 Sublime Green. I'll get these parts out for more of the rear suspension area and the rear radius rods are attached then to the left and right sides of the frame and the uh, differential carrier gets attached to the rear axle. Remember, scrape the uh, chrome off before you glue pieces. Now also make sure a uh, test fit everything to make sure that it fits properly. The rear axle assembly then can be attached to both the rear radius rods in the frame and the drive shaft and both disc brakes can be painted semi-gloss black and after they're dry attached to the rear axle assembly. Now we'll use these pieces to work on the front uh, suspension and um, you're going to need to very carefully test fit everything and I suggest using some gel type super glue to set the parts into position and then uh, a, a strong joint. Uh, so the front axle then can be attached to the frame assembly and then both front radius rods are attached to the frame and the front axle. Now the sway bar can be installed uh, to the between the front axle and the frame assembly there and the lower tie rod gets attached to the front axle. Now the bell crank and the upper tie rod are attached between the front axle and the frame assembly. Here are the pieces for the interior. It's pretty basic. There's just a few pieces there but you can detail it pretty pretty nicely. Now we're going to paint um, uh, the in interior a, t a silver and then the fire extinguisher of course is painted red with some uh, silver trappings for the metal parts and some semi-gloss black for the sprayer. Now the handbrake is detailed semi-gloss black and the shift lever uh, gets painted the same. The bucket seat then uh, is painted with some semi-gloss black as well. Now the throttle pedal handbrake fire extinguisher, shift lever, and the bucket seats can be attached to the interior. Remember to scrape off the paint before you glue. These pieces for the, um, the roll bar and some of the interior suspension or driveline parts and uh, the front roll cage and the rear, the left brace and the right brace can be assembled and they're painted uh, with the sublime green as well. And the steering gear gets painted silver and the steering wheel is uh, also silver with a little bit of semi-gloss black uh, for detailing. Now the gauges and the clutch pedal are painted uh, semi-gloss black and the steering gear then is attached to the uh, front roll cage. Now the gauges and the steering wheel can be installed to the steering gear. The clutch pedal then is attached to the front roll cage. Now we can add the front and rear tire assemblies that we did earlier to the frame. Um, glue those into position and um, so they don't roll off the table. And you, as you can see, uh, this thing is coming together. You now have a uh, rolling frame here uh, to build the rest of the body on. And now we'll use these pieces to assemble the headers. As you can see, there's a little flash on some of them. You have to clean those up. And this is probably the most challenging part of the kit. Uh, in fact, I... I, I had a little trouble with the alignment and I'm sure that some of you people have figured out the secret here and you can let us know. But uh, the header plates and the exhaust headers are painted uh, semi-gloss black and then the plates get attached to the engine. Now the engine uh, assembly then can be installed into the frame. Now remember, uh, scrape off the paint for the gluing points 
and then the exhaust headers are attached to the header plates. I painted the, uh, the wheelie bars with a little chrome paint and then uh, of course the wheels are a flat black there at the back. I used some slow setting glue so that I could uh, properly detail these and make sure that they were even in the back end uh, when I glued them into position. Now we'll uh, paint the uh, Pitman Arm and the Drag Link uh, silver and once that's dried uh, we can attach uh, that to the belt crank and the upper tie rod and the front roll cages uh, and mounting place and the steering gear. These pieces are next including the uh, two halves of the fuel tank there and we'll assemble those and then the fuel cap gets attached to the tank assembly. Then you can attach that to the rear cross member and tank stand back there. Next get out the inner body shell and the, um, the clear piece for that and we're going to, um, that's uh, for the blower cover, and we're going to spray paint the, um, the inner body shell with the same sublime green and the blower shell is molded in clear as, as I mentioned and that's for displaying the engine if you want that effect um, and it's attached to the inner body shell. Next we'll work on the uh, body here next and uh, there's a copyright script in there but it's just printed and it actually covers up pretty easy with paint but you can sand it off with some light sandpaper if you wish. Now we're going to work on the body pieces and um, you get an option of having uh, uh, side windows or side panels to turn this cam back into a delivery uh, van but uh, nonetheless it um, the, I use the side panels and attach those to the body and then you got to clean that uh, entire body up look for any party lines on the fenders etc um, there's some light ones there so sand those off and, and get everything nice and smooth remove any blemishes and then the body assembly and the front pan and spoiler they all get sprayed with your body color. I use that uh, sublime green and the front pan is uh, attached to the body and then the spoiler is attached to the front pan. There's a variety of decals that come with the kit um, and I chose the Vagabond kit which came out in the 72 release and then the body gets uh, splay, uh, sprayed with a, a clear coat to seal the decals into position and um, it it's starting to look like a really nice uh, display model here. And now it's time to grab the windows out of the kit uh, and remove those from the tree carefully. Um, I always snip off the uh, sprue attachment points a little bit uh, towards the sprue and then sand off the uh, edges there to make sure you don't crack the plastic. Now you can use um, any of the uh, white glues like Elmer's or um, clear part cement uh, and window maker from testers even uh, you know uh, the uh, a crystal clear from Microscale. They're all good uh, solutions for putting windows in place. The front bumper, bumper is next and gets attached to the body assembly and there's an option of either headlights or headlight covers for this kit and for this build I used the headlights so they are then attached to the body assembly. Next we'll use the rear bumper and shoot here and um, the rear bumper gets installed to the body uh, and the parachute uh, it's painted with uh, some semi-gloss black and then attached to the rear of the body assembly. The tail light bezels are painted uh, silver and the tail lights themselves are some stoplight red. Well now it's time to start bringing things together um, but um, there's a caveat here. When I started to assemble the uh, inner shell assembly uh, I noticed that there was an interference fit on my sample and I I think that I put everything in together right so you may run into this so uh, install the uh, body inner shell assembly onto the frame just you know place it into position and make sure it's operational before installing the body assembly and I found that the fuel tank needed the cap removed uh, moved a little bit uh, more to the side or else uh, the, the bar on the inner shell assembly would hit the fuel tank assembly and wouldn't go any further so watch for that uh, interference and then go ahead and uh, look for your glue points and attach the body assembly uh, or in, inner shell assembly to the, to the frame and then the uh, body assembly can be attached to the frame assembly with no glue so that it can be propped up and down lifted up and down. There's two body support rods that can be used to hold the body up to display the um, 
the lower frame. And these support rods were painted silver. And then they're placed uh, between the front suspension and the body assembly. Just no glue, just used to prop up the body. Well, there you have it. Your model is complete. And uh, what a head turner. It, it Still, after all these years, this is a, a fun kit to put together. Uh, and AMT has done a good job of uh, keeping the molds nice and crisp. Uh, they were pretty clean. There was very little flash. And um, I, I really enjoyed putting it together. Um, the trickiest part, like I said, was the headers, and uh, I know there's some secrets uh, to put the, to to do that more more uh, efficiently. But um, anyway, it's it's possible to retool the body so that you could even use those other nose pieces, but uh, they may not do that. Nonetheless, uh, if uh, I were you, I'd buy one and put it on my shelf. Well, we hope you like this premium step-by-step -step scale model kit review and so that you don't miss any more, please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking on the icon in the lower right of any of our reviews. You can find us on Facebook and our website, rightonreplicas.com. Thanks!